Hey guys, you're watching Tech Edit. I'm Basil, and this is the Honor Magic 6 Pro. And it could be the least iPhone like phone out right now for a few reasons. First off, look at it. There is nothing iPhone about this design. It looks very, very unique. And on top of that, the quad curved screen moving away from the trend to flatten the front and back of phones. Xiaomi, Google, Samsung with the S24, S20. 4 Plus and Ultra, all flattening things out. Honor holding steady. And I really do like a lot about this phone, especially with regards to the camera, because it, quote, Apple thinks very, very differently. I'm going to dive into all the reasons I love this phone and the things I don't like quite so much in a second before I do. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do. It's how you stay on top of everything that I do. Right. On a Magic 6 Pro, the design, it's available in Epi Green, which is a version that I've got all black. Get the green one and you've got this vegan leather back as well as polished sides. They've got a gold tint to them. Really, really premium looking and feeling. Won't be to everybody's taste, but the black one is much, much more accessible. It has a satiny finish around the back, a matte frame around the sides, but they all curve into a quad curve front display. Now on the front, you might think, hang on a second, a pill shaped front camera. Surely that's very Apple. Well, actually the Honor Magic 4 Pro and 5 Pro all had a pill shaped camera. It's a throwback to the Huawei days, the mates of old. All that's happened here is Honor's moved it to the center of the screen. So I wouldn't quite call it an Apple ripoff because Apple actually copied the pill shaped camera from Honor and Huawei if you're gonna go down that route. What you do have is a stunning display, 6.8 inches. It is huge and in fact this whole phone is very, very big. It's very heavy at around 229 grams and 8.9 millimeters thick. It's definitely one of the chunkiest phones out right now. So you have to be okay with that before you pick one up. But there is a very good reason for the size and that is the battery, which is one of the largest on any mainstream flagship. I'll come on to battery performance a bit, but you've got a bottom and top firing speaker on this thing. At the base, you've also got a USB-C and a SIM slot. Mine is a dual SIM slot version, and there's also an eSIM inside here too. So you can have two SIMs, one eSIM or two physical SIMs. IR blaster at the top, so this thing's a TV remote control as well. And on the right side, everything tapers in nicely to make it feel just a little bit thinner. And you've got volume and power buttons as well. And around the back, the camera bump is kind of housed with within this squircly type shape. And in the green version, the one I've got, you can see this kind of flowy jade kind of coloring around the camera as well. I like the look. I don't love the look. I personally actually prefer the black one, though a lot of reviewers that I spoke to preferred the green one. So it really is going to come down to personal taste. What I will say, whichever option you go for, both look and feel very premium, well weighted. Now onto that display. It's a quad curve display like I said. So whether you swipe in from the sides, top, bottom, it feels very, very nice and smooth. What's also nice is the size. It's 6.8 inches, a roughly 20 by 9 aspect ratio. So it's big, it's expansive, your content looks great on here. Having that cut out pill shaped camera is going to be cutting into your content. So it does take a little bit of getting used to. But fundamentally, I really like the screen for the most part. The peak HDR brightness of 5000 nits is eye searing. And that might sound like a good thing, but actually when I'm playing back HDR content in low light, that high HDR brightness, it supports Netflix, which is great. But I was watching Avatar and I felt like I, I just uncomfortable because the highlights were too bright, even though I had the screen brightness down. So I would urge Honor to maybe look at that and dial things down a little bit. 5,000 nits is too bright for pretty much anything, in my opinion. What you do get is 1600 nits peak brightness when you're outdoors. So I had no issue seeing it, even in direct sunlight, sunny Barcelona for Mobile World Congress. And there's plenty of eye care stuff on here, customizations in the settings to make the display look right for you. Moving on to the cameras, and you've got two 50 megapixel cameras, the wide and the ultra wide, and you have a 180 megapixel telephoto camera. Now, Another reason this phone isn't very iPhone is because of the camera mix. While iPhones have around 25 millimeter wide angle of view for the main camera, this phone has a 27 millimeter, so it goes in a little bit tighter. While the new iPhone 15 Pro Max has a five times periscope, this phone has a two point 
five times periscope. So it isn't actually as far reaching as you'd expect from a flagship. Having said that, because that's 2.5 times the 27 millimeter, which is a little bit less wide, it actually works out to roughly a three times zoom on a lot of other phones. So that equates to 68 millimeters. If all of that went over your head, what I'm trying to say is looking at the specs, the zoom shouldn't be a big concern unless you really, really love far, far reaching stuff. You also have that 50 megapixel ultra wide, which has autofocus as well. And another highlight of the main camera, it's aperture switches from f1.6 to f2 in automatic mode, whether photo or video, and you can control that manually in pro mode across both. It's a shame Honor didn't whack a one inch sensor in here because that would have really taken it over the edge with that 27 millimeter wide angle. Beautiful depth you'd have been able to get from it, but you still have a very nice optical quality from the lens on here. And what's also great is the telephoto camera can capture relatively close up shots at around 30 centimeters. So it's also good for macro-esque type or at least product photography. So I really do like the camera mix on here, making it much more versatile for a shooter like me than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Generally speaking, I really like Honor's processing. It's very balanced. It tends to lean towards overexposure a little bit, so it pulls loads of details out of shadow elements, much more so than Xiaomi phones, for example, but it does tend to clip in the highlights a little bit and also brighten up dark skies a little bit artificially, but I do still like it. You get a very pleasing and relatively balanced looking result. You won't always get color consistency across all the cameras. Specifically, I found the wide and ultra wide did a good job of being matched up, but the telephoto camera could warm things up a little bit in certain scenes, but still detail is very, very solid. Main camera, you won't get a huge amount of background blur differentiation when you switch aperture between f1.6 and 2.0. Oh, but you will definitely be able to handle dark and bright environments when shooting video better as a result of that variable aperture. So I would leave that in automatic mode or manual shooting mainly in video. What I can also say is you may grumble about the lack of zoom compared to the 5X zoom on the S24 Ultra and iPhone 15 Pro Max, but I really do like the 68, 70 millimeter type focal length. It's what we saw on the OnePlus Open, which I really liked as well. And it's the kind of focal length I tend to shoot at, versatile enough for portrait and product shots alike. Indeed, the Honor Magic 6 Pro zoom camera captures a really nice quality to its telephoto shots at up to around um, seven to eight times zoom. In fact, you can comfortably reach to a 10 times zoom and you won't realize you're shooting on a 2.5 times zoom camera. This is partly down to Honor's smart photo processing that really helps eke out extra detail and uses computational photography. I'm not sure how much actual AI is at play, but it definitely feels like it redraws some elements. This is especially true when you go beyond 10 times into the 50 times zoom, etc. It smooths things out and makes everything look a little bit like an oil painting, not super accurate, but very low on noise. And to an untrained eye, you just think it's a good photo, but it's only when you look close to you realize that it's actually simplified the aesthetic of the photo quite a lot, drilled things down to their base components and almost redrawn them. Very reminiscent of the Vivo X100 Pro at really far zooms. But if you're going to stay beneath that 10 times zoom, you'll really enjoy the Honor Magic 6 Pro. It's even good in low light because you've got that 180 megapixel resolution, because you've got that big sensor, it's roughly a one over 1 1.4 inch sensor or thereabouts. It's the largest sensor on a periscope camera. And so it's able to capture decent low light results with one caveat, moving subjects, just forget about it. In fact, low light shots in general with moving subjects, it does struggle with more so than one inch sensor phones that maybe can speed up that shutter speed. But if you're capturing static objects, subjects, it's a beautiful camera day, night, and in good light, the motion sensing time stopping capture can freeze a subject nicely. So all in all, the Honor Magic 6 Pro's camera is very good for stills and that extends to the front camera as well. It's got autofocus. I did find when I was in a rush to take a picture, it did struggle a little bit. I got some artifacting. It couldn't quite catch up with me. So this is definitely a phone for people who don't mind holding a shot a little bit, but if you're okay with that, you're going to get good results. That autofocus also means 
you can create nice background depth separation when you go close up to the front camera. Also impressive about the front camera, which isn't really about photo quality, is the biometric security it adds. I could log into banking apps with this thing. So in addition to the fingerprint scanner, it's a really powerful front camera with a 3D time of flight sensor. As far as video goes, the phone can shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second. No 8K video on here. I don't mind personally. I found stabilization to be solid all the way to max resolution and frame rates. So the Honor Magic 6 Pro as a camera phone gets a big thumbs up from me. Honor's processing is generally good. Not my absolute favorite. I do prefer Oppo and OnePlus a little bit because it balances highlights and shadows a bit better, but I definitely prefer this to what Xiaomi's doing, what Samsung, and even what Apple's doing in a lot of respects. Diving inside the phone, and Honor's customized the Magic OS experience finally differentiating from what we saw on old Huawei phones. My favorite thing about this is the fact you can change an icon, a shortcut on your home screen into something of a widget to add additional shortcut elements by simply dragging and expanding it. This is so, so useful. I review a lot of phones and usually my home screens all have exactly the same look and feel, but with Honor Magic 6 Pro, I made something really Really nice and bespoke because I could. Honor's actually lifted a dynamic islandy style interaction from the iPhone, and it's the only element about this phone that makes me think of an iPhone. It is quite useful, to be honest, because you get shortcuts to media playback and also things like a timer, etc., in around the front camera cutout. Um, but no denying, it's a dynamic island. But it's a dynamic island that seems to work well. Inside the Magic 6 Pro, you've got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 matched with 12 gigabytes of RAM, and I had no issues with performance. I ran early software, so in early versions of the software, I had a few UI glitches, but after a couple of updates, they ironed themselves out. Everything was smooth, multitasking was great. I was able to download Genshin Impact with the app in the background most of the time. I didn't find it forced closed, and playing back Genshin impact. It played very, very well. Benchmarking, I found throttling kicked in after about five, 10 minutes of high intensity gaming, maybe a little bit less, but once it hit a kind of its stride, it was able to keep performance solid. Frame rates were solid and also it didn't get too, too hot. So Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 generally impressing across the board on this thing. And what impressed me the most, I have to say, is that battery. 5,600 milliamps. It's one of the few few phones out now, along with the OnePlus 12, that's able to go into a second day pretty comfortably, even if you're using the phone moderately. So the Magic 6 Pro and OnePlus 12 are definitely the options if you need long lasting battery lives. This phone also charges quickly with 66 watt wireless, 80 watt wired charging, though it doesn't ship with a charger and it doesn't ship with a case either. So you'll need to pick those two up separately. It'll be an honor specific charger if you wanna hit those max speeds, not a standard like power delivery. So I'd urge honor to maybe move towards that standardized option if it isn't including a charger in the box. So all things considered, I do really like the Magic 6 Pro. And one of the things I like most about it is just how different it is to any other phone on the market. The camera is a really unique offering and it's reliably good. Great in certain respects, not so hot in others. I'd get the black one if it was me, like I said, get a case on it and you are laughing. This phone's IP68 water and dust resistant as well, so it should be durable. And with 512 gigs of storage, you're gonna have years of use on this thing before you fill it up. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. If you did and you want to know more about the Magic 6 Pro, let me know in the comments section below. If you haven't already, check out my Genshin Impact OnePlus 12R unboxing. And if there are any videos that you'd like me to make, be sure to let me know as well. Thanks for watching.